AP 120, Chapter 18, Topics, Acidosis and Alkalosis. So, we've been talking about blood pH. Well, the normal range for blood pH is 7.35 to 7.45. Important numbers to remember. Normal pH range of blood, 7.35 to 7.45. When the pH of blood moves below 7.35, we are now experiencing uh, acidosis, acidification of the blood. And the more uh, it goes down, the more dangerous it is for the person to the point that if blood gets too acidic, the person will die. And then there's uh, the other extreme where when the pH is above 7.45, the person is experiencing alkalosis. Uh, there's a certain allowance, a range of it that is survivable, but if it gets too high, the blood becomes too basic, it will cause the person to die. So, acidosis. How can that happen? Well, either you have an accumulation of acids that increase the amount of hydrogen ions, dropping the pH, or you have a loss of bases. Now that the relative amounts of hydrogen ions and things that bind to them have changed, this cause a relative increase in hydrogen ions, leading to a pH drop and potential acidosis. So respiratory acidosis is the increase in the production of carbonic acid. Uh, so you have a chronic decreased rate and depth of breathing. So less uh, carbon dioxide is being lost when the person breathes, causing an accumulation of carbonic acid in the bloodstream. This could be caused perhaps from an injury to the respiratory center so that it is not properly regulating breathing. Uh, there could be some sort of obstruction in air passageways that's just preventing the uh, release of carbon dioxide. And there could be just a decrease in gas exchange, say from some sort of disease. So for instance, someone with emphysema, they're not having as much gas exchange, so less carbon dioxide is being lost from the blood, and so it's going to build up. So these are various factors that could cause respiratory acidosis. And then there's also, could be caused by metabolic acidosis. This could be caused by, say, kidney disease and diabetes. Uh, so the kidneys have a failure in excreting acids, excreting hydrogen ions, so uh, the blood pH remains high, or perhaps uh, someone with uh, diabetes mellitus is having excessive production of acidic ketones, increasing the amount of acid in the blood. And then these accumulate and lead to metabolic acidosis. And of course, you could have the other extreme, the loss of bases. This could be caused from prolonged diarrhea, uh, could lead to a loss of uh, acids and also because of a loss of the alkaline solutions in the intestines. So then uh, this would then, strangely enough, end up affecting the blood pH because we expect the intestines internally to be somewhat alkaline. And another possibility is prolonged vomiting. Lots of vomiting, lots of loss of uh, stomach gastric acids, and even in some cases, loss of intestinal secretions. So that someone's vomiting so much that they're actually losing intestinal fluids in that vomit. So again, intestines are normally basic or alkaline. So losing their fluids will be an excessive loss of bases, which can lead to metabolic acidosis. The relative balance between base and acid has been disrupted. So symptoms of acidosis could include uh, drowsiness, disorientation, stupor, labored breathing, cyanosis, uh, tissues looking kind of bluish, especially the um, mucous membranes. And eventually extreme acidosis can lead to coma and death. Of course, uh, the body doesn't want this sort of thing to happen. So normally if you're healthy, the body is gonna try to compensate for these changes in pH to return to the normal range. 7.35 to 7.45 by doing things by having the chemical buffer system to bind to excess hydrogen ions, by increasing 
breathing rate and depth to get rid of carbon dioxide and by increasing the kidneys excretion of hydrogen ions. But again, if these systems are disrupted, then this person could develop acidosis and that would need medical treatment because if it gets severe enough, it could lead to death. Then of course, alkalosis, when the pH is too high, when you're losing hydrogen ions, again, caused by loss of acids or accumulation of bases, leading to blood pH rising. Respiratory alkalosis, this can be caused by hyperventilating, breathing in too rapidly, causing an excessive loss of carbon dioxide. Um, and hyperventilation can be caused by a lot of things. It can be caused by anxiety, stress, uh, fever sometimes, poisoning, or even high altitude. If someone's in extremely high altitude, high in the mountains, they could not be able to get enough uh, oxygen, so they're going to breathe fast, causing the hyperventilation to occur. So, hyperventilating, breathing rapidly in an uncontrolled manner leads to excessive loss of carbon dioxide, decreases the amount of carbonic acid, decreasing the overall concentration of hydrogen ions, leading to an increase in pH and respiratory alkalosis. Then there's metabolic alkalosis. Uh, this is caused, could be caused by a great loss in hydrogen ions. So vomiting, uh, this time vomiting and only losing the gastric contents, so not the intestinal fluids, but only the gastric, the stomach fluids, is a massive loss of hydrogen ions. Where did those hydrogen ions come from originally? They came from the bloodstream. Uh, gastric drainage, losing gastric fluids in another manner can also cause a similar problem. And then certain diuretics can cause... Um, metabolic alkalosis. So loss of non-respiratory acids leading to metabolic alkalosis. And at the other end is the gain of base, uh, gain of things that bind to hydrogen ions. Um, the main way we know of this happening is an excessive ingestion of antacids. So if someone gets hooked on Tums, and they're eating Tums all the time, this could increase the amount of base in their bloodstream, leading to metabolic alkalosis, which should hopefully be easy to treat by just not eating the antacids anymore. All right, alkalosis, some of alkalosis, again, lightheadedness, agitation, dizziness, tingling sensations, tannic muscle contractions, you know, massive cramps, and decreased in breathing rate and depth. Compensation, of course, as we know, our body does not want this to happen, so we have those various processes in place to try to resist this. The chemical buffers, uh, like carbonic acid, that release hydrogen ions, um, decreased respiration so that we lose less carbon dioxide, thereby increasing the amount of carbon, carbonic acid in the bloodstream and the kidneys decreasing their excretion of hydrogen ions and increasing the release of bicarbonate, which is a base, so lose excess base, re uh, retain as much hydrogen ions, much acid as possible. But again, if these systems are disrupted in some way, that makes compensation not possible, leading to alkalosis, which would eventually need medical uh, care to prevent the person from dying, because once it gets too extreme, it's coma and death. That's the happy ending to this chapter.